Yala National Park is the most famous national park here in Sri Lanka and for very good reason. It has one of the highest densities of leopards in the world and today I'm going to be joining the Cinnamon Nature Trails team on a leopard safari to see if we can find some individuals. All the guides at Cinnamon Nature Trails are naturalists. This means they have extensive knowledge of plants and animals. They have also worked with large film crews such as BBC Earth and Nat Geo Wild. The leopard identification system that they are using was set up by the Yala Leopard Diary. This system was set up to research individual leopards in Yala National Park to gain clarity on behavior and territory range to create long-term conservation strategies. Okay, so as you can see here, this is how the leopard identification is done. They identify the spots on the forehead, the spots between the eyes and the ears, and then also the side of the face and, well, the mystachial area. But they were also telling me that they have a new way of identifying them, and that is by looking at the spots on the belly and on the back. And this is very cool because this is a whole wall full of leopards that they've already identified. The leopards that are identified are given two names. The first is a scientific name and the second one is a human name. The scientific one is obviously easier for the scientific purposes and the human name is easier on drives to actually be like, hey, this is Gina, you know, she was born in 2008. So it's also easier for people on the drives to understand what is going on. Now with the identification, they can obviously get a lot of information. But what they were also telling me is that, uh, for example, Gina, this family line, every single cub except for Harakora will be getting a name with the J so that they know that this is one family tree. This identification system that was set up by the Leopard Diaries is really cool for safaris because this way they can tell any visitors about the specifics of an individual. So instead of looking at just a leopard, you now know that you're looking at Emma, for example, and you will get to know about her family tree, about her traits, about the range, her backstory. So this is very cool with connecting people with wildlife. But obviously for science purposes, this is great as well, because if they spot any individuals in the wild, the team can actually collect photos and information about a certain sighting and send it to the leopard diaries. And then they can confirm if it's a certain individual or if it's a new individual that is in the range. Up. Where will you guys sit? So you can sit somewhere here. So I can sit here? Yeah, I am sit and I sit Okay. Okay, well it looks like we're ready to rock and roll. to Yala National Park and I'd like to introduce to you the two people that will be joining me today and who will be showing me around. We have Gayan and I have Sampath over here. Hi. They are the guys with all the knowledge and they are also going to be talking about hopefully the leopards if we can spot an individual once we get into the park. But first of all we need to get there. Well isn't that exciting? We are now going to be entering the Yala National Park. I'm so ready for this. National Park is actually the second largest national park here in Sri Lanka after Vilpatu, but it is the most visited one. Uh, it is located on the southeast coast of Sri Lanka and today we're going to be visiting Block 1. Sorry guys, getting distracted by monkeys and a wild boar on the road. This is when the big boys come out. Look at that. So somebody, how do you decide actually in which region you're gonna go look for leopards? So uh, according to uh, this morning sighting, so uh, we had a, this morning there's a nice sighting in Rockville area. So there's a nice uh, rocky outcrop area. Mm -hmm. So there's a, a big uh, female bull hawk and uh, two cubs are there. So we are heading to that area. Oh. So we may have a very good chance to spot them because we had a very good sighting uh, this morning and also afternoon that very cool climate. Most probably we may have a good sighting. So like the hopes are both cubs are brown cubs uh, so uh, the same size of mom. But there is another uh, liquid uh, called strawberry which she has uh, yeah. Yeah, one small thing, yes, yes. So we will try that area. Compared to this afternoon, the climate has already changed drastically. This afternoon it was so, so hot, but now we're going towards 3 o'clock and it's a very a really cool down part of it. There's a nice breeze, so through this frost we get to see you. So you won't be able to see it. 
right now by telling by the dark cloud that is on the other side here. I also think there's actually going to be some rain coming in. So it's not just cooler weather, but it's going to become a little bit wetter. Yeah, so besides leopard, Yala National Park is home to a lot of different species of wildlife. Uh, the well-known ones are like the sloth bear, the leopard and the elephant, but it is also home to many different species of birds and smaller mammals, reptiles, so it is a very biodiverse zone. Gayan, how many leopards are there estimated to be in Yala National Park? So in Yala National Park, within the last 7-8 uh, years, we have identified about 151 leopards, but like us, most of them have died now so there are about uh, 60 to 70 leopards living in the block one area in block one yeah and you guys have not identified any in the other blocks yet oh. we have identified some others uh, in the other blocks but we haven't done a proper research yet uh, in the Kumana we have done a research and I have identified about 40 leopards but it's still many more to photograph yet. Mm -hmm. What Gayan was telling me is that they have identified some leopards in some other blocks but block one is actually the most popular block for people coming to do safaris and this is also where most people uh, who are staying in Tessa Maharama will actually come and uh, do their jeep safaris. They have identified some individuals in the other blocks however there are not as many roads in the other blocks so it could very well be that they have missed other individuals just because of the inaccessibility of the area. Now when you have a camera like yeah. Sampath's, <laughs> you are able to see the little bee eaters way better than my camera. There he is. <laughs> yeah, what I was saying is that every single time we go into like a little next section here in Yala, the, the flora, fauna, everything is just changing so rapidly. Even the smell is changing as we go from one uh, area to the next. It's actually quite fascinating. Wow, look at this peacock giving a show. <gasps> yes, buddy. Over here we have the lake, and then there, in the distance, in the background, is the ocean. That is the uh, elephant rock. So, uh, so iconic uh, rock in Yala. Most of people who take the photo now, uh, behind the background. So the bird that we have just spotted is a black-necked stork. I think this is such a crazy looking bird, but apparently this is the tallest or the longest bird in Sri Lanka and the only place that you can see it in this country is here in Yala National Park. So I'm feeling pretty special that we got to see this. <laughs> against the clock to see if we can actually spot any leopards because yeah the rain is definitely coming in and what the guys just told me is that leopards don't really like the rainy climate so they'll go and shelter somewhere so hopefully once we get into the right area we will spot some wow and this guy has made himself very very comfortable so the deer alarm calls so the deer so when they see so many predators they make the alarm calls so it's more probably a leopard is out <laughs> Okay, so there are warning signs, but also the rain has started, so we're going against the clock to hopefully see a leopard today. Actually, only two places in Yala that you are allowed to get out of the vehicle and this is one of them right on the beach so behind me is Yala jungle beautiful beautiful rock and then the ocean and we have some fishermen over there in the background so unfortunately the day so far is not going as planned I really had hoped we would have seen uh, leopards so far but I'm not gonna give up just yet I'm really hoping that we're still seeing despite that the weather is also not playing its part We'll see, these guys are doing a very great job. They are hearing the warning calls. They are really doing their best to spot them. And they also usually know where the leopards are. So it's just a, a patience game and hopefully we get lucky. So from the commotion, you can probably hear we have spotted some elephants. Okay, so what is a tusker? Tusker is a male elephant. So not every male have tusk. In Sri Lanka, we have a species called Elephas maxis maxima. It is a sub subspecies endemic to Sri Lanka. So uh, tusker gene pool is not very prominent in Sri Lanka. 
because uh, most of tusker elephant prominent tusker elephant have removed from the natural environment because of the pilgrim uh, purpose and uh, pirates people have uh, people have killed a uh, long time back in uh, especially in uh, uh, colonial era mm. so uh, so it's quite special we see a baby yeah, with a tusk baby with a tusk is a very very special yes <laughs> Okay, we haven't seen any leopards yet, but this sighting of the elephants is absolutely incredible and they've gone into the water now. of how close we are. There they are. Wow, yeah, the crocodile over there. Oh, and that baby is so fluffy. <laughs> Wildlife does not always run on a schedule or on a plan. Things don't always go to plan. Uh, it's coming towards a time that we have to start heading back to the gates uh, to the entrance of Yala National Park. Before we do that, we're going to go back to the rocky area to see if we can see any leopards soaking up some of the heat of the rock, hopefully in the rain. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's just still stay hopeful until the end. Before we go, there's a croc on the road. We have arrived back at the Cinnamon Wild property and as you can maybe hear, it is absolutely pouring down with rain. So they haven't had rain here in a while and of course on the day that I'm going to go and identify leopards with them, it starts pouring. And leopards don't like rain. So yeah, unfortunately it didn't go to plan. But because the sound of the rain is so loud here, yeah, I'm gonna give you my final thoughts on everything in a different location. Well guys, this is a bit more of a quiet place to actually give you the outro. What did I think of my experience? I highly enjoyed it. Even though we didn't get to see a leopard, it is so fantastic to be able to learn and experience Yala National Park with people who understand and love wildlife. Kayan and Sampath were able to tell me so much about the different birds, the different animals, the different plants, which is really, really cool. What I also love about this team is that although they are doing commercial safari drives, they are also involved in conservation projects. One such project is Project Leopard, where they have been donating steel pens to cattle farmers on the outskirts of Yala. What has been happening is that leopards have gone out of the boundaries of the national park, killing some of these cattle farmers' calves, and then in return, you know, also affecting their livelihood. So what Project Leopard has done is they've been donating steel pens to these cattle farmers so that the calves can stay uh, safe at night, they can be locked in. But in turn, this also saves the leopards because the cattle farmers were actually poisoning the carcasses that the leopards would come back to eat and in turn killing them. And we can understand this because, you know, if your livelihood is being affected, then you obviously want to get rid of the thing that is doing that. And unfortunately, that was the leopards. But now with the, the new steel pens, the populations of the cattle has been growing because more and more calves actually survive. And also they have not been killing any of the leopards. So in turn, this population can stay healthy as well. Now the idea is they've already paused it on uh, the certain location where they were doing this and they're going to be moving this to a new location uh, and another side of the uh, park ranges. So I think that is really really cool. This is where tourism and love for wildlife and conservation all comes together. So I loved learning about that and enjoying the day with them. I hope that you enjoyed this video despite us not seeing any leopards. I really really hope to see you in the next video and if you want to show this video a little bit of support hit the like button because it would definitely help to spread it a bit okay guys thank you for joining all the way to the end of the video and i hope to see you soon bye